Okay, welcome back. So today we're going to learn about AES first. And uh, AES is the advanced decryption standard, but we're going to do this using Python. And there are a few libraries uh, regarding encryption in Python, but the one we're going to use is called PyCryptodome. And uh, I personally found it very easy to understand and use. Now, it's the newer version of PyCrypto. And uh, so if you have PyCrypto already installed, especially if you have like a Linux system and or a Windows system, uh, I would uninstall PyCrypto first and install PyCryptodome. It's the newer one. It's maintained. and. Um, it's uh, it's actually a really full featured. I, I really like it. So there are other ones like there's Libsodium and there's Cryptography. Uh, those are the other two main ones that come to mind in Python. But we're going to focus on PyCryptodome. Okay. Um, so it does have nice documentation here. We can go to the documentation. Um, notice all the different uh, packages or modules that it comes with. We're going to be using some of these, but not all. So uh, it, there's also, you know, example problems that you can check out. So encrypting data with AES, and there's there's different modes too for encrypting data with uh, AES. So the one that we're going to start out with is going to be CBC or Cypher Block Chaining. So let's take a look at the code. You can install PyCryptodome with, uh, through with pip. You can just go pip install PyCryptodome on Windows or uh, Mac. If you're using Linux, uh, I think you should try uh, pip3 install PyCryptodome. All right. So notice here. Here is the code. Notice how short it is for encrypting with AES. We're going to import the AES from uh, crypto.cypher. Uh, crypto Notice when we go to the API, API documentation, I want to show you how to access this uh, API because that's important in order to learn how to do stuff. So we, we can come down here, right? And um, so we would go to, so let's go to, once again, let's go to crypto.cypher. And then let's go to symmetric ciphers here. And then we'll go to classic modes of operation, which is where CBC is. And we can scroll down. There's ECB and there's CBC. OK? and so here's an example of to the encryption and decryption using CBC. So let's take a look at our code. First thing we're going to do, oh, actually, before we continue here, we're importing the AES. And then we're actually importing uh, pad from util padding. Now, the reason we're doing this is because Cypher blockchaining requires the data that is going to be encrypted to be in CBC mode. OK, so that's cipher block chaining. That requires the data to be in 16-byte chunks. Everything has to be 16 byte chunks. Now, that's okay, but then what happens towards the end of your file? Does it end? Is it, is it per, like in other words, if you go, you know, the size in bytes of your file mod 16, is the answer going to be zero? Probably not. That means you're going to have some kind of, you know, uh, you might have, let's say, five left. Well, you're going to need another 11 bytes to pad it 
to make it into a full 16. That's what this is for here. That's what this line here is for, line 4. We're going to have to import pad for that. That's all it is. Then we're also going to import get random bytes. And the reason we're going to do that is because we're not going to actually create the password ourselves. We could. We could type in 16 characters uh, just, you know, here in the program. But I'll show you when we get there. First thing we're going to do is we're going to open the file that we're going to encrypt. So let's take a look at the file that we are going to encrypt. So if I open another terminal here and I go to uh, here and here is the file that we're going to open. Okay, so it's a it's an image of a of Tux the penguin. So just wanted to show you what it looks like. And so now that you've seen it, that's what this file is. It's a PNG file and it's Tux. Now we're we're opening it for reading, but also we're opening it in binary mode, and that's important. Okay, so this is not text, uh, and if it was, in any case, we'd have to change it to uh, we'd have to encode it. To, to make it a binary object, uh, sorry, a byte object. Now, we're gonna op we're gonna go with open that file as f, and we do we the reason we do that is just because when you use with open, you don't have to close the file when this loop finishes. It automatically closes the file, so that's convenient for us. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to read the entire file in one shot with f.read and stick e the whole image into this variable called data. Done. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to pad the data. Now notice here I'm going pad and notice I imported pad but I'm going to pad the data or the file that was just read but I'm going to pad it with the AES block size. Now in this case, the AES block size is 16. Okay, so um, we, it's probably a good idea just to specify AES block size here. That's the standard way of doing it, but it may work if you just type in 16 and two, that's fine as well. Um, now, here we'll go uh, get random bytes that's where we're making the key. Okay, so this is the symmetric, this is the symmetric AES key right here. Notice get random bytes says just essentially it does exactly what it means. We're going to just create 16 random bytes uh, using a random number or, or a random generator. Okay, 16 bytes is 128 bit. So this is standard uh, AES encryption. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, open, hold on a sec. So what we're doing in this um, little loop right here is we're opening a new file. Notice it's for writing binary mode. And we're going to call it AES key. And we're going to write key to it. Now key was created up here on line 13. So we're just going to write the 16 random bytes that we created to this file called AES key. That's it. The next thing we're going to do, because essentially if we don't save this file here, then we're going to have no way of decrypting it. So we need to save this key, these random 16 bytes that we've just um, created on line 13. If we don't save this, because once this Python program is over, those bytes will be gone if we don't save them to disk. So the next thing we do is, this is the, this is kind of like the most important line here. This actually creates the new cipher. Um, and so we'll go AES.new. And again, back here, uh, you can see that. Um, there's the example of it was here, okay, and so in our code, when we we're creating this new cipher, and we're using key as the key. Remember, key was created up here, and we're specifying the mode. It's CBC, cipher block chaining. 
this doing this automatically we we could have we could have manually created what's called the initialization vector iv but we don't need to it'll create it for us automatically but we'll need it in a few minutes or in a few lines the next thing we do is once we create our cipher we encrypt the data with the new cipher so we'll go cipher.encrypt and then the data now what was the data remember the data was the data that was read from the tux png image okay so now cipher data is the encrypted data okay so maybe i tr maybe i'll change this because i think i want to use a different uh standard way of describing things and maybe i'll just go e underscore data so e underscore data means that it's the encrypted data okay so i'm using the aes cipher dot encrypt the data so now i've got it now what i do is uh, i'm going to create a new file okay and my file is going to be called encrypted data and i'm opening it for writing in binary mode and now i'm going to write two things to it this is important. You might think I only need to, to write eData to it, but no, I actually have to write something else to it first. And that's the cipher initialization vector, or just the initialization vector. And that needs to happen, because if we, if we go back to the way um, CBC works, Okay, so to describe how Cypher blockchaining works, we take 16 bytes of data at a time, like this, and the first thing that happens is we take this initialization vector. Now, what is this thing? What is this initialization vector? Well, it's also going to be 16 uh, bytes of data, but it's going to be randomly generated okay it's randomly generated and it's used to prevent the same you know uh, let's let's say for example if you were to encrypt the same file twice with AES you wouldn't want the final so this is what comes out this is the 16 bytes of data that comes out this is the next 16 this is the next 16 so if you if you didn't have this if you didn't have the initialization vector then essentially uh, if you encrypted the same file twice then the encrypted data would be exactly the same that's bad okay but with this kind of randomly generated uh, Another, you know, you know, you're not supposed to use the same initialization initialization vector twice. So, in some sense, it's kind of like a nonce, which is a number used once, but it's not a number. It's a, it's a vector. It's a sixteen. It's sixteen bytes. So, essentially, it's used such that, like I said, if you encrypt the same thing twice, the encrypted data that comes out is not going to be the same. And that's important. Now, because of that. That means we're going to have to send this initialization vector to the recipient as well as the encrypted data. So it's not so in other words we need to send both. Now you might say okay well if that means can't someone just you know copy the initialization vector? Yeah, but don't forget the key or you could think of it as the password in this case is being used in the AES encryption process that we kind of uh, there was a video in my previous lesson that describes I'm not going to go into the steps into how AES works mathematically but uh, enough to say that the key is being used here so just because the initialization vector can be is, is easily identifiable or dis, you know or if you could you're not encrypting this initialization vector, it still doesn't mean that you can decrypt the data.
Okay, you still need the key. It's just that this initialization vector prevents the output from being identical when the input is the same. Okay, so let's go back to the code. So now, what do we do? Well, finally, this line, of course, encrypts is the line that encrypts the data, and we, everything is now in the encrypted data. But now we have to write that to disk to save it or perhaps to send it. But before we do, now this is something you could do. This is a choice. I'm actually putting the initialization vector at the top. Now, this is going to be 16 bytes. Okay, and this is at the top of the file. After that first 16 bytes, then you have the actual encrypted data that comes right after it. So now everything is in this file called ink data. Okay, so why don't we go ahead and run this program? Okay, so I already have ink, ink data already, so I'm going to delete that there. And so now um, I don't have ink data anymore. So now I'm going to run the um, AES uh, encryptor. And there we go. Let's take a look now. And we have encrypted data. Okay, just for interest here, uh, take a look. Here is the original file, and here, here is the encrypted data file. Okay, so take a look at the sizes. This thing is 174064, and this one is 174, uh, right? So they're almost the same size, but remember, I've, I've added the initialization vector to this encrypted data one. Okay, now obviously at this point, I mean, the thing about looking at something is if I try to open, obviously you've seen me open the original one, but can I open the, the other one? And the answer, of course, is no, I can't. Uh, if we looked at it, if, I, if we kind of looked at the file, we wouldn't notice any difference because to us, a PNG doesn't make much sense visually either if we looked at the actual you know, binary data inside the PNG. However, now we need to be able to decrypt this. So let's say we, we um, well, we're not going to send this to anybody because the problem with sending this is we'd have to also send them the, the key. So we're going to solve that when we learn RSA, that problem. However, for today, uh, it's best just if we could decrypt the file. So let's take a look at how to decrypt it. So AES CBC decrypt. And again, it's very short. So again, we're going to import AES. We're going to import unpad this time. We're going to open the file. Okay. Uh, in read binary mode and look here's the cool part we're gonna read the first 16 notice in Python dot read when you when you do not supply an argument inside the brackets of dot read it reads everything when you do it specifies the number of bytes to read so do you remember before we stated that the first 16 bytes was the initialization vector so there we go. We've just read the first 16 bytes, and we've assigned it to IV. And then we're reading the rest of it. And maybe I'll change this, date, this name again. We'll call it um, eData. And now uh, I am going to also read the AES key. And we'll read that. And then we're going to. Uh, create the cipher, but this time we're going to specify what the initialization vector is as the third argument. Notice that in the previous example, we did not. 
Okay, so notice I just opened the encryption one on the right. This is the encryption file. We ran this already. Notice here on line 19, I don't have a third argument. The, the initialization vector gets created automatically. But in line 13 here, in this one, I don't want it to be created automatically. I actually need to specify it because I need the exact same initialization vector that was used when I encrypted it. And that got stored, remember, here at the top. So I read that now, and I saved it as IV. Now I need to provide that initialization vector when I create this new cipher here, providing the key. And remember, where did I get the key from? I saved it in this file. So here, OK, um, the key was randomly generated. Here, the key was read from disk, from that file. And the initialization vector was stored in the, at the top of the encrypted data. And so once I do that, now I can create my cipher.decrypt. And I will, OK, so we need to change this line here from cipher data to e-data. OK, so say the encrypted data. And this came from up here. We read it when we opened the encrypted data file. And now we can decrypt it. And now we have the regular data, not the encrypted data. But before we do anything with it, we have to unpad it. OK, reverse the padding that we did before up here. OK, so then finally, the data needs to be written to a file. And we'll do that right here. And we'll call it tux2. And we'll write that to the file tux2png. Now, uh, let's give that a shot. So I'm going to save that. And um, you notice here that I already have tux2png. So I'm going to delete that. And now we'll go python3 aes decrypt. And when I do that, oh, actually, well, maybe before I do this, let's go ls again just to see. You can see that now tux2 is gone. And now when I run it, tux2 is back. And let's take a look if we can see it. Ta-da! It works. There it is. You can see it. That's tux2. So. So it's actually perfect bit for bit. Um, and that was our demonstration of using um, AES encryption and decryption. OK? So on the left side, we have the decryption. And on the right hand side, we have the encryption. OK, so let's do one more type of uh, encryption mode with AES. And that is going to be a modern mode. And we're going to do EAX. Notice here, so I've gone to, uh, let's, let's kind of go again. Let's go to the beginning, and let's go to API. And then let's go to uh, Cypher. And let's go to Symmetric Ciphers. And this time, instead of going to classic modes, we're going to go to modern modes of operation. And here it says modern modes such as, sorry, classic modes such as CBC only provide guarantees over the confidentiality of the message, but not its integrity. In other words, they don't allow the receiver to establish if the ciphertext was modified in transit or if it really originates from a certain source. So there are new modes, OK? A EAD or authenticated encryption with associated data. To combine, they combine encryption and authentication into a single uh, step, so to speak. But it, it is a two step process internally. So I'm not actually going to go through this. Um, 
but I am going to show you EAX mode. Okay, so here is EAX mode, and um, let's actually show you a example of this. Now, the cool part about this one is, okay, so here's the encryption. Here's an example of how to do the encryption. But the, the nice thing about this one, which I think is pretty cool, is that notice that in the decryption, they're using a try accept, which essentially means that if the data was tampered with in transit, then it's going to throw a value error and and basically you can you can that's the way to catch the authentication is correct is if it doesn't throw an uh, an exception so let's have a look at the solution to that as well okay so here is my example of uh, EAX mode now this one is the recommended mode that PyCryptodome uh, says that you should use it's the it's a modern version and I think that it's doing I don't fully understand this yet but I know that it's using hashing to do the authenticating and it's a two-step process but I don't need to fully understand the internal mechanism of the library in order to be able to use it so if I go back to the code essentially what's different here where the, there's no initialization vector that's one thing so again on the encrypt side I am doing the same thing I'm getting 16 random bytes I am saving that and this time I'm using a e s e a x key as the file to save it to and then I'm uh, creating a new cipher with the new e a x mode using that key that I just ge randomly generated and I'm opening my image file again for encrypting and now I actually do the encryption and authentication which is using hashing internally in one step here in cipher.encrypt and digest and there's the, the, the image file and a tuple comes out the first thing in the tuple is the the encrypted data and then the tag is the second item and then so after we create that tuple, now we have to write everything to the file we're going to send. So we're going to write the nonce, the number used once, the tag, and then the actual encrypted data. And so those three things get sent to, or we get written to, this file here. Now, coming to the decryption side, we open the file okay, for reading. And the first 16 bytes is the number used once, the nonce, and the next 16 bytes is the tag, and then the rest of the data is the encrypted data. So now that we have those, we, we need the key to decrypt it, so we'll, we save the key over here, A-E-S-E-A-X key, so now we'll open it for reading, and we'll read it as the key, and then here comes the try accept. We have a try accept here because if this if this try throws an exception that means that the decryption failed and we possibly could have uh, tampering of the data or perhaps it might be even file corruption who knows um, but in this case we're going to use the nonce kind of it's very similar actually to the way that the initialization vector was used uh, before in CBC mode and then we're going to actually do two things here we're going to not only decrypt but also verify so the tag is being used in the verification process uh, that's that's my interpretation and so uh, next after that is complete without error we now have the data and now the data will be written to tux3 so let's give it a shot so here we go let's uh, well, first of all, let's get to our terminal and let's uh, let's run this one. Let's actually let's actually just go ls here, and we do have tux3, so we did try it before. So let's go. Let's delete it, and now we'll go Python three, and we'll go aes 
encrypt and we'll run that okay so that ran and then the next thing we'll do is we'll go Python 3 and we'll go uh, oops AES EAX decrypt and now when we run it now you'll notice tux3 is back and when we open up tux3 ta-da we decrypted it okay so that was our demonstration of CBC and EAX mode symmetric AES encryption okay so that's the end of this lesson hope you enjoyed it and next time we're gonna learn about RSA asymmetric encryption see you next time